and in the dream my husband and I were in this house and there were like high vaulted ceilings and all of a sudden Alan started to float up toward the ceiling and when his head reached the ceiling he started to go through okay so I'm like this is the rapture so I start to float up and I'm going Lord this is it and uh, when I reached the ceiling everything just went white it ended and so uh, then I woke up and uh, this morning as I was just laying there with my eyes closed I saw in a vision the word WAR, all capital letters, in dark black. And just a few days ago, the Lord had given me a dream and a word about war. And I had asked for everybody to pray and intercede about that. But, uh, you know, so here the Lord's showing me this again. It just, I, I really feel like the Lord is saying this is uh, something of grave concern. And we, we really need to be praying about it and uh, seeking the Lord on this, on what we need to do, if there's something we need to do to prepare uh, I don't, it's hard to say what we're going to see, what the church will see before we're taken um, out of here. And so I just encourage you to be praying about that. And I, I just wanted to make a comment about, on that last video, I saw uh, a brother or sister in Christ who's from South Korea asking for prayer. And there was just such an outpouring of love for that person. Uh, everybody's saying, you know, I'll be praying. And I just wanted to encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ in South Korea that we are praying for you and our hearts go out to you. Uh, but ultimately, we all really, wherever we're at in this world, okay, we have got to trust that the Lord is taking care of us. He is able. He is our safe place. In fact, he's the only safe place in all the universe. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who believe that uh, they have these bunkers, these underground bunkers, and they, they believe that they're going to be safe. But I have news for them. Uh, what's coming on this earth is coming on the whole earth, okay? The Lord gave me a vision uh, a few years back. It was after that Jordanian pilot had crashed and, you know, ISIS captured him and they just brutally burned him alive in a cage. It was horrible. But a few weeks after that, I had a vision and I saw a large cage and the earth was inside of it. And I saw this crane just taking that cage and bringing it over top of like a pit of fire and just lowering it, getting ready to lower it. And as I was watching that, Holy Spirit was stirring within me that scripture from Luke 21, verses 34 through 36. And this is what it says, Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. And Holy Spirit kept emphasizing the whole earth, the whole earth. There are, no, there are going to be no safe places on this earth during the time of the tribulation. The entire world is going to be uh, under wrath, under God's wrath, under judgment. And uh, it's just not a place, you know, we want our loved ones or our coworkers, anyone to be left in. Uh, but we know that uh, there are still many, many souls in that valley of decision. And, and if you're one of them, you know, I encourage you to, uh, as Chad from Watchmen on the Wall 88 likes to say, uh, make the best decision of your eternity. Give your life to Jesus now while you still can. Come into the ark. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us if we confess with our mouths Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Uh, it's that simple. You know, just surrender lordship of your life to Jesus and trust his blood to cover your sins and you're, you're birthed into the kingdom of God. Okay, so uh, I encourage any of you, if you don't know him, do that now while you still can. Um, but I also wanted to just put a word of caution out for anyone who has been coming against other members of the body of Christ who are watching. Uh, you know, I'll see uh, comments about somebody who maybe set a date it came and went and and calling them false prophets and just assaulting them and uh, please understand when you do that you are putting yourself in a precarious position see there's nothing uh, unbiblical about set, setting a date jesus said no man knows the day or the hour but in context he was not referring to the rapture he was talking about the end of it all okay at his second coming the rapture and, and the lord's second coming are two separate events uh, and p the apostle paul tells us you know that yes jesus is coming as a thief in the night but he says but you brothers and sisters are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief 
All right, so we should have an understanding of the timing. And just because somebody sets a date uh, to watch and it comes and goes does not make that person a false prophet. That makes them a watchman, somebody who is watching. And what did the Lord say about those who are watching? Well, in Luke 12, verses 35 through 37, he said this. He said, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for it will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. All right. But what did the Lord say about those who are attacking other members of the body of Christ? Well, on into verse 45 in uh, Luke 12, Jesus said this, but suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. Oh, we see those comments all the time. This date came and went, nothing happened. Hmm, what do you have to say about that? Okay, and he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women. Assaults are going on everywhere. And to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. Does not look good for those people. Okay. I'm just saying be careful. Okay. Be careful who you are assaulting uh, and who you are, um, you know, calling names. That is... <laughs> That is not a ministry. There's nothing good that comes from that. That is the work of evil, okay? To uh, cause disunity, to assault other members of the body of Christ, okay? So, anyway, uh, that said, I also wanted to bring up uh, Mark Biltz. He had a video, uh, Steve Fletcher had uploaded this morning, and um, I was listening to it, it was about Hanukkah, and Mark was explaining how in Matthew 24, the Lord is literally talking about Hanukkah in, in reference to all of the, the uh, tribulation coming on the earth. And so he was saying that the tribulation and Hanukkah are like a parallel. Of course, the tribulation will be far worse. And so I'm going to leave a link to that video uh, in the description box because we know as the body of Christ, we are not objects of wrath. So we will be out of here before the tribulation begins, you know, and, and perhaps the, uh, the time around Hanukkah is the time when the tribulation will begin. I don't know, uh, but I know that we will not be here to see it as the body of Christ. So with that.